Well, hello and welcome uh, to this webinar on the topic of MTB online exams. Now, um, we have titled this, you know, Curious, because we know that a lot of you uh, have been curious about what they're doing. Um, my name is Sharon Mark Teggart, and along with Dr. Sally Cathcart, we are both the co-founders and directors of the Curious Piano Teachers. Uh, we both run our own uh, piano teaching studios, I'm in Northern Ireland and Sally is over there um, just outside Newbury. Sally, how are you today? Yes, I'm, I'm good. The weather's not quite so great over here, but generally I'm, I'm really good. So hello, Sharon. And it's lovely. We've got lots of people already coming on to the webinar and it shows kind of the high level of interest that there is in, in exams generally at the moment because of the new uh, problems that we're having and restrictions and I think in the, the interest in the Music Teachers Board in particular. Um, so just so you know that the webinar is being recorded and we will be sharing it on our social media sites. If there's any bit of it that you uh, want to re, re replay or if you have to go early. Now, for those of you that haven't heard about the Curious Piano Teachers, we are an online membership organization that helps piano teachers from all around the world to learn as much as they teach. And I know I can see we have lots of members on our webinar today, and hi everybody. Um, and if you're curious about becoming a member, which of course, who, who isn't? Um, then we currently have a one month free trial that is on offer. And Sharon's going to tell you a bit more about that in a moment and what our members are finding really useful. So um, over to you, Sharon. Um, indeed. Thank you, Sally. Um, and feel free, we have our chat is, is open today and um, Mark and Nav will be taking your questions. So please just make sure you select all panellists and attendees. And without further ado, I want to just say a massive thank you to um, both to Nav and to Mark. Uh, Nav is the development manager uh, and Mark is the, the chief examiner for MTB. It is wonderful to have you both on the call. Thank you for being here. Well, thanks for inviting us. Thank you. No problem. Wonderful. So we'll be handing over to the guys um, as soon as possible. I am just going to um, run through a little bit about the Curious Piano Teachers in the meantime. Um, and I know, Sally, you have a poll there, I think. All I right, do. go, because we are curious to know how many of you, this is perhaps your first Curious Piano Teacher webinar. So, um, while Sally gets going with that, um, yep, I stuff. am that's brilliant, super stuff. I am just going to share a little bit more about um, <clears throat> about what we do here. So, as Sally, I think, has already said, um, we have an online membership site, and basically, together, we all our aim is that we learn as much as we teach, and that's always a really good thing. Um, members get extend access to an extensive library of ready-to-use teaching resources and videos. Um, we have now been doing this for over five years, just over five years. Uh, we had our fifth birthday there back in May. And so there are now well over 50 topics. Um, so from how to plan lessons effectively, how to teach notation, technique, uh, how to teach sight reading, memorization, improvisation, got resources for teaching beginners right through to teaching adults uh, and more advanced students, resources for educating our parents, for creating studio, studio policies, for running a piano teaching business, resources for online lessons and obviously that's been something that we have responded to quite quickly um, since March, rhythm flashcards, ebooks, and also videos where you can observe others teaching as well. So it's really practical. Um, that was kind of very much the idea as we set out uh, to establish this online membership site, that it would be very practical, very specific, and where you can literally lift teaching ideas um, you know, from the videos, from the workbooks, and immediately incorporate them into, into your piano lessons. We have um, a wonderful, wonderful, um, community manager. This is a picture you can see here of Hannah O'Toole um, and she looks after all our members, uh, sending out weekly newsletters, um, interacting with our, our members on our member exclusive Facebook page, 
We just yesterday started a 90 day um, teaching challenge for members. So we do lots of exciting things. Um, and of course, the other thing, and I wanna just take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to MTB because in tonight's newsletter, all our mm. members are going to be receiving um, a complimentary copy of the Grade 3 Piano Handbook. So just want to say, Nav, Mark, thank you so much. Um, and to David as well, very, very generous because we have kind of about 600 odd members. So <laughs> that is 600 odd books going out for free. So thank you for that. Um, and the other thing is we have, um, ultimately our, our members are getting to connect with one another, not just inside our Facebook group, but we also have um, weekly Zoom chats. Uh, we have member exclusive webinars and meetings. So if you are on this, and I can see that so far, I think we have, let me see, yep. Um, we have a percentage there who this is your first webinar. So if you're curious uh, and would like to try out membership free for one month, just simply click the link. I'm going to pop it there in a minute inside the chat. Enter free support, which is the coupon code, and log in. You can get 100% free access right across the board to everything for one month. Um, after that, you can cancel if it's not for you or if you love it so much. You can either stay as a monthly member at £26 a month or a yearly member at £197 per year. So um, I am going to just stop my screen share if I can find that there. Well, I, was, I was just going to come in there, Sharon, and I decided to wait till you finish because just talking about the resources, what we did in September is we looked at improvisation, getting started with improvisation. Last week, Sharon shared some fab little photos of things like clocks and what do you, oh, well, like floating balloons, and it was a traffic jam, wasn't it? Um, yeah. And actually, I've just published a blog that's got those same photos on it because I've had such fun with my lessons this week. Um, on, online lessons, which I'm giving, and I played, I improvised a traffic jam using seconds, and the, the, the child, the pupil, had to guess whether I was playing floating balloons or traffic jam. Yeah, and it, it was just such fun. And this week they're all doing that, their end. And they're going to, uh, we're going to re ro roll reversal next week where I have to choose. So now, just before we go straight over to, um, to Mark and Nav, um, Sharon's going to send out another poll. And this time we want to know whether you are thinking of entering candidates for the MTB exams at some point in the future, this term, next term, at some point in the future, um, or that no, you're thinking about it. So just click on the one that you, uh, you, you, you're considering at the moment. And I just want to put, before we go on to their main presentation, a few minutes to put exams, really, into context in this particular time. And those of you that have been to us, some of our previous webinars will have heard me say this before, because over the last eight months, I think we'll all agree that the world has changed significantly and we've all had to change along with it. And COVID-19 continues to have a big impact on our well-being and mental states. And that goes to absolutely everybody, I think. And as in many other professions and areas of life, the changes for piano teachers and our particular little world has been really profound and I think very long lasting. Now, back in January, March, within, um, well, back in March, within a matter of weeks, all of us that could, and that was most of us, I think, moved our piano teaching online. Now, this meant that we had to change the way we teach. And if back in January, a Victorian piano teacher had managed to pop, uh, fly into the future and pop their head into a piano lesson, I think they would have recognized many of the same elements in the lesson as they probably um, used to use. A typical lesson which we know from research is teacher-led, uh, a master-apprentice approach and focus around preparation for an instrumental exam. In this case a face-to-face -face exam on the whole. Now just eight months later and I think that um, they would find many piano lessons actually quite different especially if they're on um, online, but even face-to-face, -face, I think, probably have changed fundamentally. 
There are some elements, of course, that have stayed the same. Uh, but I think now there's probably more pupil-led work. There's better use of questions from teachers because you have to know when you're teaching online how to ask the right questions to get the responses from your pupils. And there's also, I think, from teachers, we've had to really think about giving uh, more direct and purposeful feedback. The, dynam the dynamics of our lessons, I believe, have felt very different with the online environment. And I think also there's been far less emphasis on exam preparation. And that's meant that some people have felt very lost, I think, as teachers, because without the exam preparation, well, how, how do you know what to teach? Because I think like everybody else, uh, the exam boards have not been able to continue with their usual method of delivery. And for all the big exam boards, you know, they've had to go from um, working in an office to actually doing, uh, communicating everything remotely. And that has been a big upheaval as they've been working from home. So as I say, there's been, um, most exam boards have not been able to continue with their usual methods of delivery, but with a couple of notable exceptions. And I think one of which is the Music Teachers Board, whose system of assessment was already completely digital. So, both Sharon and I are absolutely delighted to be welcoming uh, both Mark and Nav to our webinar. And I know we're both really curious to find out a lot more about the Music Teachers Board because we've heard a lot of good reports from our members about it. So I'm going to hand over to Mark and, and Nav to tell us more about the Music Teachers Board. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sally. And, uh, um, we're delighted, of course, to be here, but I think I'll get straight on then and tell you a little bit about what we do. My name is Mark Kessel, as you can see, and I'm the Chief Examiner at the Music Teachers Board, but I'm also um, an instrumental teacher of some 40 years experience, so I know very well the challenges that everyone faces in motivating their pupils every day, but I also know the challenges that you all face in navigating the instrumental examination system and almost everybody involved in the creation of the music teachers board mtb exams music teachers board were are enthusiastic and very uh, very experienced teachers i'm having a little look at this this is quite interesting for me to see what we've got there um, that's really interesting really good thank you um we uh uh yeah, as I say, most of the people involved in the creation of the board were and are in, in, very enthusiastic, experienced instrumental teachers. Teachers who uh, realise that the graded instrumental, graded exam system is really fantastic and it, it gives great targets, but that the method of delivery is, um, is, ha has inherent issues in it, which we felt if we engage with technology, we could overcome a number of those issues. So what we did was we, we looked to the GCSE model. And I think many of you may be aware that GCSE music for decades now has been delivered using rec uh, audio recordings of pieces. This is the practical element I'm talking about of GCSE, using audio recordings of pieces which are then marked. So all we did at MTB was we applied that GCSE model to the instrumental graded system. A very simple change. And I, I only mention that because it kind of puts into context what I'm going to tell you and explains why we did what we did. So the first thing to reiterate there is that the Music Teachers Board MTB exams was created by teachers for teachers. And um, we sum up the whole system in a, in a short few lines, which I'm just going to um, uh, uh, read out to you now. This is the crux of it. The Music Teachers Board provides an exciting new way to take Ofqual regulated instrumental grades one to eight. Our exams are recorded in the lesson by the teacher, submitted online and marked by our specialist examiners. That's all it is. That's, that really is the basis of the whole thing. You record the exam in audio using our app in the lesson. You submit it online and then we, uh, it is then marked by instrument specialist examiners. So 
as you've already heard, we were doing this before COVID. It's the way we, we started. And therefore, um, we already sort of flagged up the main advantages of this system, even out of COVID situations. We, we believe it uh, has many advantages anyway. And I'm just going to list the five key advantages that it kind of gives you. If you have no visiting examiner, which is what you do, is what happens with this model, is you first of all, you get complete flexibility over exam dates. Secondly, you end up with less stress levels for, lower stress levels for pupils and for teachers. You have, you, you're able to offer exams at lower cost. You're able to offer specialist examiners, instrument specialist examiners. I'm going to detail these advantages in a moment, but I'm just going to list them. And the fifth advantage that I'm going to mention now is the convenience, obviously, of not having to travel to an exam centre. I'm going to just mention that the Music Teachers Board um, uh, is a recognised awarding body uh, regulated by Ofqual. Uh, Ofqual is the Office of Qualification and Examination Regulation in England. And our uh, grade six to eight offer UCAS points at the same levels as any other instrumental graded board. But there's one other very important thing to understand about the whole thinking behind MTB exams. It's, it's central to the whole core of why we've done anything at all. And it's this, this is, this is the, the thinking. We believe that the, the whole process of learning to play a musical instrument including taking grade exams, should be a positive and enjoyable one. We believe there's no, we, we believe that taking exams should be an enjoyable play. We all teach because we love music. We want to transmit that love and joy of music to our pupils. We do that as best we can. There's no place in that process from a, for a traumatic exam experience or negative experiences or experiences that are not enjoyable in examinations. They need to help with that process and so we hope that we've created a system which pupils will find more enjoyable and positive. So let me just go through those advantages in a little more detail so you understand them. Complete flexibility over exam dates. MTB exams offer all year round assessment. You can take or enter an MTB exam 365 days a year, any day you like. You can enter it two days before you take it, if you like. It's extremely flexible. You, as you know, you don't, normally, you, you, very often you have to wait for exam periods or enter months in advance. That is definitely not the case with this system. Reduced stress levels, I mentioned, for pupils and teachers. Well, we're all familiar with walking into the exam room and walking down to the front and meeting for the first time the, the examiner that's coming to assess your your performance and that is an intimidating situation for many people and some candidates that intimidating situation can get the best of the better of them and they sometimes come out feeling like they've not really shown what they can do and not played very well and feel a bit unhappy about it not because they can't do it but purely because the situation intimidated them to an extent that they weren't able to show what they are capable of Obviously, in an MTB exam, you are with your teacher in a familiar environment of your lesson. And so a lot of those stresses are reduced and hopefully pupils are able to show us what they really can do, which is, let's face it, what we're trying to find out. Then, of course, there's um, stress for teachers. We may not always have thought about this, but we're asked often in September whether we want a pupil to take grade three in December. Do you want John to take his grade three piano in December, we might be asked. Well, the, the answer is, if John practices, then he should be ready to take his grade three piano in December. But what if he doesn't practice, or he's not well, or any other number of things get in the way, or you want to do something else for a bit? Um, if he's not ready, and it causes all sorts of stresses between you and the pupil, and if he doesn't do very well in the exam, or worse still fails, it may mean that John doesn't ever want to take exams again, or worse still, even ever want to play the piano again. And that would be the one thing we're desperate to avoid. You might have the other way around. It might be that 
John is nearly ready to take grade three piano now. And do you really want to wait until December to take it and ask John to carry on playing those same few pieces for the next few months? We, we all know that it can be quite demotivating to play the same repertoire for a long period if you really feel that you're ready to take the exam and move on to new and exciting repertoire. With MTB exams, you take the exam when you're ready <clears throat> and therefore you, you in, in a way, optimise your rate of progress. So I'm going to move on to the next thing. We said the exams are lower cost. They're considerably cheaper than other boards. I'm going to also now move on to a very big advantage that we can offer because this system makes it easy for us to offer instrument specialist examiners. So everybody taking an MTB exam is marked by someone who is a specialist in their instrument. So a trumpet exam is always marked by a trumpet, player, teacher, specialist, a trombone exam by a trombonist, a guitar by guitar, drums by drum, piano by a pianist. Um, and that, uh, as you know, is quite different often. Examiners are being asked to come in to mark a range of uh, exams in a range of instruments, many of which they can't, of course, play or teach themselves. And that's quite a tall order for an examiner. Then there's the convenience of not having to travel to an exam centre. With MTB exams, you choose where to take the exam. Very often, people take them in the course of their normal lesson time, but you might think, well, there's a nicer room in the building. In the, if you're in school, for example, you might think, we'll use the hall with a nicer piano. It's up to you. Um, but you can take it wherever it is convenient for you or the pupil. We have centres, in fact, that have to travel 300 miles to do face-to-face -face exams. Not for the 300-mile round trips, for example, to do their face-to-face their, um, <clears throat> -face exams. So that is perhaps the, some of the reasoning behind why we created MTP exams and some of the advantages we hoped to be able to offer pupils. <clears throat> I'm going to move on now to talk to you about the syllabuses and basically what you have to actually do for an MTB exam. Because an MTB exam is a full exam with all the elements, if you like, that you would expect from a traditional exam, but offered online. So I'm going to ask Nav if he would be kind enough to share his screen, maybe, to show us the website. <clears throat> so this is the home page, and if you go to the hover over how it works, you'll see that there's um, under there a lot of interesting, useful information that you might want to have a look at. But if you go to syllabuses for us, and just click on syllabuses, please, we're going to show you, um, it, it's an exciting time for MTP exams. If you just stop there, that's a good place. We are now launching our new, this month, just launched for many instruments. We're in the process uh, of, at the moment, launching all of the different instruments, um, new 2020 syllabuses. If you're a seasoned MTB user, you can use the traditional syllabus that you've been using up to now, right until the end of March 2021, but you are able to move on to the new syllabuses straight away. So let's move down to the um, if you scroll down on the syllabus page, Mark, just at that point, if I could jump in, there's been a good question that we have had this change come about this year. Was there anything that prompted this change? Yes, there was. <clears throat> um, the reason we want, uh, basically MTB exams, I suppose I should explain very clearly that we are a teach, as I've said, a teacher led organization. We listen to teacher feedback. That's what we want to know. How can we support teachers in achieving the goal of making their pupils love music, enjoy taking their exams, and therefore become great musicians? And we have received a lot of feedback. And one of the feedback uh, elements that we received quite regularly was, it's, a, it's quite hard work to work out exactly what you have to do for an MTV exam. There's quite a lot of, there was a little bit of confusion, for example, over what was required. So what we've done has largely been to, one, simplify the process of understanding what you do for an MTP exam, try to make it clearer. That's one thing. But we've also listened to feedback, which has said from teachers, um, how do I access materials? You know, some of our centres are in places like Myanmar and things like that, where they've got almost no access to 
um, physical music and things like that. So the digital element of being able to access materials has been quite important to a lot of our learners. So we've tried to make it that on this new syllabus, as much of material as possible is easily accessible directly from the website, from the syllabus page. With the click of a button, you can get your scales, your tech, all the other stuff that you need, and um, you'll see in a minute. And so basically it's easier to understand the requirements of the exam and easier to access the materials that will help you and your pupils to take the exams. And that is the reason for this really fundamental change in what we've done recently. So if you go down, please, now to the uh, on this page, you just scroll down to find your instrument. We're obviously going to look at piano today. So you click on piano. And as you scroll down that page, you'll see that there are three uh, things, syllabuses, uh, technical exercises and additional resources. They all have that little red plus sign to the right, which if you click on it, will open up uh, various uh, extra parts. So if you click on the uh, plus sign to the right of syllabuses, you can see the 10 grades that we have. There are 10 because there are two pre-grades. We have a pre-grade introductory and a pre-grade higher. We feel it's quite helpful for pupils to be able to be rewarded in the very early stages for their efforts to encourage them and motivate them to reach the next rung, if you like. And it also enables you to reward them and, and keep the pace going so that you don't have to launch into grade one before you are ready to do so. Uh, and that some of those fundamental other elements that sometimes have to be rushed in order to <laughs> make them feel they've got somewhere, you have time with these two pre-grades if you wish to use them to do that. We're gonna though look at just a normal grade. Let's look at, for example, grade three piano. We click on download. And I'm just gonna tell you the overall structure. So the simple structure for an MTB exams is this. Section one is a recital of three pieces worth 60 marks. Then moving down, section two of the exam is the technical section. This consists of technical exercises and scales. And then the third section of the exam is the music musicianship section, which has two options, reading skills and traditional sung oral tests, or option two, the same reading skills, but instead of the oral tests, to perform a duet. And we regard a duet as a, a, a good option for listening skills. And the reason is that, as we know, we not only want to master the ability to play our instrument, but also the ability to play our instrument while listening to others. Um, listening while you play is a key skill um, for musicians. And so ensemble playing gives you a very good way of developing that. And it's also, by the way, something that's uh, required at GCSE. So let's move back now and look at those sections in a bit more detail. So the first one is the recital section. As you'll see, you can see there from the way we scroll through it, there's quite an extensive list of pieces there. And um, it says, select three pieces from the following list. So you can select, any, there's only one list, no list A, B or C or anything like that, just the one list. You select any three pieces from the list. They could all come from one book if you like, or they can come from different books. Um, it's entirely up to you. As you can see there, the top um, several pieces there are from the MTB piano book, grade three. So this is what we've been talking about. If you go to the, to the right, there's a link to the bookshop. You just click on that, and then that will take you to the bookshop. You can buy that book, and that has in it all the pieces, all those pieces, and it has the scales, the technical exercises, the duet, and everything else you need for your MTB exam. It is a digital book. In other words, it arrives with you and you print off or use on screen, whatever you like. So it's a digital book, so they're kept quite reasonably priced for that reason. However, you may decide that you prefer to use material later on in the list, and there's a whole list of stuff on the syllabus there, it's worth having a quick look at the range of styles, and you can choose, as I say, three pieces from the same book if you like. There's all sorts of stuff there, including the new Lang Lang books and things like that. Um, 
But if we go back to the top now, there's one other thing it's worth pointing out. It says, as an alternative to the pieces below, candidates may perform up to three free choice pieces. So in other words, if you look at this list and you think, fine, but actually I've got pieces that I teach and use that I think work better with my pupils and for my methods of teaching that I would prefer to use for my grade three, um, I can do that. Of course, they have to be of the same grade standard as the pieces on the list. And we provide their guidance on how to select appropriate pieces. So for example, if a piece is on our syllabus or on the syllabus of any other regulated board at grade three, then it is suitable because it's at the right standard. <clears throat> but if it doesn't appear on anybody's syllabus, you might want to go through what we call our free choice approval service. This is a service that enables you to get our reassurance that it's of the right standard. It's optional. You may be quite confident that the piece you presented is of the right standard. And there we are, there it is. Under there is the free choice guidance and the free choice approval service that you can look at. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, a little bit of a <clears throat> cough. Don't worry, nothing COVID related. Um, just talking a lot this morning to a lot of people. Um, and uh, moving down the page, uh, then we can go on to the technical section. So, as I said, one of the things we try to make as accessible as possible is all the access to the materials. And so, as you can see, there's a simple one click to the technical exercises. So, I'm going to ask now to click on that now. And these are the grade three technical exercises. You perform both of those exercises in the exam. And then you go back and you go to the scales and you click on scales. And there you have the printed music, which you can give access to your pupils or they can just access it from the website, whichever you like. Um, for all the scales they need to practice and learn to play for the exam. So that's the scales and technical exercises you'll be asked to perform. One of the differences for MTB is that you perform all of the scales in the exam, not just a selection. So you would perform all of that in the exam. If we now move down to section three, musicianship. So if you just scroll down for us now just slightly, and we're going to look at the reading skills. The reading skills are actually um, consistent for both options here. So we'll have a look at those. One of the things that's different about MTB exams is that we don't have any unprepared elements. So you won't be given an unprepared piece of sight reading. You won't, that's not what we do. We do what we call reading skills, and these are based on understanding of rhythm. So they are clapping exercises of rhythmic uh, different types of rhythm at each grade. And if we just click on download the reading skills there now, please, that would be brilliant. And we go down and we click on the grade three. We can have a look at what you have to do for the grade three reading skills. These are the reading skills you would practice and do in the exam. You do all six of them and they're at different speeds. And they are these, as you can see, based on compound time, six, eight, nine, eight, 12, eight at grade three. Um, however, to make that easier for teachers to deliver, we've also uh, done something else. If you just go back, please, Nav, to the um, reading skills page and go up a little bit, there you can see in red the reading skills recordings. Now, obviously, a lot of exams are having to take place over webcam at the moment, and that is a bit of an extra challenge that we've tried to accommodate as best we can on top of uh, the fact that our system works quite well anyway. And the reading skills where you're trying to clap along to a pulse, they can either be done by a met with a metronome, the pupil's end, but we've produced a, a recording of those being delivered by a teacher asking you to clap the rhythm, and the teacher gives the bar in and carries on clipping the, the, the beat or giving the beat, and the pupil claps the rhythm with that beat. So therefore, the good news about that is you can just ask your pupil to uh, click on that to practice their reading skills during the course of the week. 
So they click on that and they can practice doing it with the uh, teacher there, even though you're not there to do it with them. So that's a useful resource. It can be used for practice or in the exam in itself. It's up to you. Also, if you just look at slightly up, there's um, a, a, just a, a, it says to watch a video demonstration of how to conduct the reading skills, click here. So there's a little demonstration. Can you see that? Um, not there, but to the left slightly down now. <laughs> There's, that's the one. It says, um, and, and that enables you to watch a little video to get an understanding of what this is all about. That's somebody doing the reading skills tests. Then if we go back and to, the, to the syllabus and look at uh, the next bit, which will be the, the listening skills. I'm not going to actually click on the listening skills now because it, we, we don't want to move on. But basically, it's the same. You get the printed sheet music there. And also, we've got a recording in that section, again in red above the sheets themselves, that give you access to recordings of the listening skills being delivered, which you can use for practicing, and also to deliver them in the exam. Let's move to this option two, where you have the option of doing a duet. So let's just click on that. And you can go down to the grade three duet. And you have the teacher's part. And then below that, there is the pupil part further down on the page. And um, you therefore get your pupil to practice that. But we've also, uh, if you go back to the duet page, you can see up there, we produ produced recordings again of the piano duets at both practice speed, a bit slower, and full exam speed for your pupils to practice along with. This is obviously just the teacher's part on there, not the pupil's part with accounting. And they would practice playing with that duet and they can indeed, obviously over webcam, it's gonna be very much more practical for you to use those recordings in the exam itself. If you're with a pupil, even as a piano teacher, it's quite hard to sit close enough anyway to a pupil so for a duet. So you may still want to use the recordings even in face-to-face -face situations. If you've got two pianos, then obviously that would be great and you can play live with your pupils if you wish, but that's entirely up to you. So I've given you a rundown as best I can and quite quickly of all the syllabus content that we've got there. Um, and I'm gonna let questions come at the very, um, yeah, let's do questions at the very end, I think is probably best. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, just show you uh, how it actually works to use MTP exam. So if you go back to the, uh, there, and we go to how it works at the top and click on that. This is a very useful page that gives you a breakdown of the six key elements of MTP exams. We've already looked at downloading a syllabus. The next thing you would need to do is to register as a as an instrumental teacher. So to register with MTB exams, at the top of the page, there is a place that says sign up. And you would go to sign up. At the moment it says my account. That's what happens once you've already signed up. But there at that point would be sign up. And when you sign up, you would sign up as an individual music teacher. And it's quite a simple process. Once you've signed up, and I'll be showing you now um, what you would need to do there. Um, so you would sign up as an individual music teacher and you'd be asked to put in various details um, and it enables you uh, to enter your candidate for exams. Once you've signed up, you are immediately uh, able to use MTB exams. So let's go uh, back, but just to, uh, in that place where it said my account before, um, which is there, once you've signed up and you into my account, you will have in my account your centre number. Please remember to make a note of your centre number, which is under my account, because that's what we use to know where to send mark sheets, etc. So when you submit an exam to us, you need to put that centre number in. So make sure you make a note of your centre number. So you've registered, you've looked at the syllabuses, you now want to enter a candidate. So when you enter a candidate, um, you make an entry. This is an extremely simple process with MTB exams. Um, for piano, because you're not brass strings or woodwind, you, you, you would click on other. 
and then you would choose piano. But obviously, if you want other instruments, they're all there. And then you would make an entry and you would pay for the entry. You put in the grade, etc. Um, once you've uh, made that entry and paid for it, you will receive, and this is another very important thing to remember, you will receive your front cover, a downloadable front cover, which basically is uh, doubles up as an explanation of how the exam works and the exam details, but also a verification form that you are going to use. So you need to have that front cover when conducting the exam. So you need your centre number and the front cover, very important. Then you've made the entry, you get to the point of taking the exam. So what happens? Well, the first thing that you would do is download our app. So if you just go to there, you click on the app and you download it. The app is on the Google Play or App Store and you download it and it enables you to record and submit your exam directly to MTB exams. It hopefully makes, as we've been trying to do with everything, the whole process much less confusing and difficult. You just simply use the app to record your student and submit the exam. So what happens in the exam? In the exam, um, in fact, before we leave there, if you just go down slightly, you can see that there is a video here, which is very helpful to look at on the app page of somebody using the app while conducting an exam over webcam. So you'll have this teacher on Zoom, you'll have the candidate in the room recording the exam with the app. And actually, this is the time to mention that, that I think uh, 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 Nav was just pointing that out, that when you do exams live with your pupil, you are with the student, doesn't matter who's got the app on their phone or tablet, because it's a phone or tablet you would use, um, doesn't matter who, who's got it on their phone or tablet, to record the exam because you're both together in the same room. However, when you're doing an exam by webcam, it does matter because the pupil is in the room with the instrument that's being played and so they need to be the ones recording the exam. You, the teacher, cannot record the exam from the other end of a webcam uh, exam because your Zoom connection sound will not be sufficiently good. So if you're doing an exam with MTB exams, uh, as a webcam, over webcam, you ask your pupil to download the app. In order to use the app, they will need to have signed up, however, not as a teacher, obviously, just as an individual user. So you ask your uh, pupil to sign up, as it's, it's uh, on my account here, but when you go to sign up, you can sign up as an individual user all that is, is a password and uh, email address, nothing else you need. But the point is it gives you the, and enables you to log in to the app. So ask your pupil to sign up as a user, download the app, and then they can sign into the app to record the exam. So it's them or their parent that would be recording the exam they're in, not you, the teacher, that's very important. So I've mentioned three very important things, center number, front cover, and make sure that the pupil records the exam if they're on webcam. So we get to the examination itself. How does it work? The app uh, tells you to start to record. So you start the recording, you press start record, and then the, um, the front cover actually talks you through the process of the exam. What it says is read the information at the top of the front cover, which is the name of the candidate, the grade, the um, instruments, the reference of the exam, who you are, the teacher. Then it says to you, this is the front cover guiding you through the process. So you don't need to worry. It's all there in front of you how to conduct the exam. It says, ask the candidate to announce and play piece one. So you will ask your candidate to announce and play piece one. The candidate will say, I'm going to play so-and-so by Beethoven. And then you will say to the pupil once they've played it, okay, would you now announce and play piece two? They'll announce piece two and play it. You continue until you get to the very end of the exam and press finish. And once you finish that save, uh, you are then able to save the recording. You can also listen back to the recording, check it's okay, but you would save it. However, there's a couple more uh, things that I need to mention here you wouldn't stop 
the recording or pause it in the middle of the exam. It's a one take exam from beginning to end. The app will not allow you to stop the recording in the middle or pause it. If you need to stop, you would need to start again, which will delete the recording you are doing. So you do the whole exam, you finish and save your recording, and then you take a photograph of the front cover and your music and press submit, and it submits the exam directly to us. Now, when you're doing an exam over webcam, one of the things that's a problem is that our, very, our front cover asks the pupil and you, the teacher, to sign that front cover before submitting a photo of it to us. However, because over webcam you will not be with your pupil and therefore able to sign that form, you would have to instead, we ask teachers please, before ending the recording, to read the verification statement that, that is at the foot of the front cover read out loud on the recording the verification statement at the foot of the front cover and that is instead of having to sign it which you will not be able to do if you're not in the room with the pupil so that way you'll record the exam all the content you will read the verification statement press end the recording the pupil will then sign the front cover take a photograph of it take a photograph of their music press submit and that's the end we get the exam directly to us Wait for the exam to finish uploading before turning it off so that the whole thing comes to us. Um, you don't have to send it straight away. You can save it to send later when you've got better internet connection, if you like it. Once it's saved, it's saved, it'll be there, it won't go anywhere. So that is basically the process. After that, two weeks later, you will receive, two, two weeks later, roughly, you will receive a mark sheet from us. That goes to the centre number to the person who's registered at the centre number that's been put in at submission. So you, the teacher, will receive the front cut, the mark sheet, and that is a mark sheet much like those of other boards, except that it is typed and not handwritten. So you will be able to read it, which is a, sometimes people mention is quite a plus, and um, also you get a breakdown of marks and comments on each section. Because you've got instrument specialists, you also might receive some technical feedback if, if appropriate. A few weeks after getting your mark sheet, which by the way is emailed to you, that's sent by email. A few weeks after that, you will receive a physical certificate in the post, uh, it, which comes, as I say, a bit later because it has to be approved by our exam board. So that, I think, sums up most of the things. I just wanted to talk about one very important thing is the COVID-19 update. So on the website, there is a, a page devoted to our COVID-19 updates that we've tried to introduce. Under syllabuses, down the bottom there is COVID-19 updates. So if you click on that, I've told you most of the things relevant to this, um, about accessing music online and free choice elements and, um, and the approval service and conducting the exam remotely over webcam and your pupil recording it. But one of the other things, if you're not a pianist, which um, this is probably not as relevant to people at this meeting as it usually is, but accompaniments have been made optional simply because you can't always have an accompanist in the room with you uh, when you're taking the exam on a, on a violin, for example. So I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, if you are somebody who has pupils that play other instruments as well, you may be a piano and also a flute teacher, for example, or something, if you have pupils doing other instruments, one of the other things we've done to support teachers is we've teamed up with Tom Play, who are an organisation that provide backing tracks um, for pupils. Uh, here we go. If you go down to the front, the home page, there's a whole thing about Tom Play. And on the syllabuses, there are a number of pieces that are available on Tom Play. And the great thing about that is that you get a backing track to the piece. That's true of piano pieces as well, actually. Um, and you get um, the ability to slow it down, speed it up, so you can listen to it, play along with it, play along with just the accompaniment, use the accompaniment track for your exam and all sorts of other benefits. So we found Tom Play gives a lot of useful uh, ways for pupils to practice with an accompaniment during the course of the week and have the ability to slow it down, speed it up for their own uh, purposes and listen to it, which is often the problem pupils have during the course of the week. Um, and um, 
So have a look at that story if you're interested. Anyway, I really mentioned very quickly <laughs> to get through it as much as I can about MTB exams. The only other thing maybe worth mentioning is that the pre-grades only have four sections, three pieces and technical exercises. So there are less elements to a pre-grade exam. But I think it might be worth opening the floor now to see if anybody's got any questions and I'm happy to try and answer them as best I can or Nav will help me. Wonderful. Well, I just want to hop in and say a massive thank you, Mark, for that whistle stop tour. This is what is great about webinars like this, where we get people like you who know this inside out and to guide us through. Because, I mean, I must say it's it's really impressive to see just how clearly led out that website website is. Very easy to follow through. Um, and it's been lovely just to have had you take us through it. Um, I, I don't know about you, Sally, but I know for me, I feel I've got a really clear holistic picture of exactly what MTB exams are all about. Yes, indeed. Yeah, very comprehensive. I was really interested to hear that it was based on the GCSE model because as a, as a class teacher, uh, a few years ago now, you know, that, that was a really interesting way of, of, of getting students to play. Um, so, yeah, very comprehensive. Okay, so now, are there questions that you'd like to... Uh, yeah, sorry, have I unmuted myself? Uh, so many questions. Sorry, uh, Mark, for some moments of delay there. I was busily typing mini essays into the chat. <laughs> so I hope everybody's happy reading a bunch. Sorry, it's the, isn't it the curse of a pianist that we just like, we type, because like we play list, right? <laughs> um, so let me get to some of the questions. Now, some of you did email in questions ahead of time, which was great. I'm going to knock down one or two of those and then hand some of them to Mark. So um, we had the question of, and duets have popped up here in, in the chat as well. Are they allowed to play their duets uh, on a keyboard because they don't have access to other devices, they're not with me in the studio, etc. Yes. Um, one of the things that Mark talked a little bit about is that obviously during this time we've made a lot of reasonable adjustments that have to be made. And of course, some students are sitting at home, their pianos may not be at pitch, they may not be in tune, um, they may not have access to a piano, etc. So you're, the student is going to have to use the device that they have available to them. And our examiners have obviously are looking for ways into f feeling the musicianship of that student and finding a way to understand how well that student has approached the music and prepared for everything. So uh, there is a lot of supportive marking that's going on. But if Mark wants to follow up on this, the as, as Sally, our head of piano, said yesterday, there are ways to make things expressive if you're on one of these keyboards that does not give you any uh, weight control. So it could be that you go between staccato and tenuto. It could be that, you know. So there are other ways that you might have to help that student develop a, a way to speak their musicianship through the device they have access to at this time. And we are happy to do that. One of the things that would have to happen is during the exam, you might want to mention um, that this is what's about to happen. Johnny's got a piano. Johnny doesn't have a piano. Johnny's on a uh, 1985 Yamaha keyboard. So please bear with the strange set. So then our examiner at least is a little bit prepared to listen with those other listening ears. Um, that, that was one of the questions that came to us from Marion and she had another one. Is there any other medium apart from MP3 where recorded parts could be stored? Some of her students don't have the ability to play MP3s on their files, um, on their devices. So that's a really good point and we've thought about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to produce .wav versions of the files and we'll get them up as soon as we can so that they're available. And then it prompted us to think about other ways that we can help get that, inf that stuff to everybody. And we're thinking that we will create a SoundCloud account for MTV and that a lot of the record, not a lot of, all of the recordings will then be available on our SoundCloud, which of course is then also still freely accessible um, to everybody. And they will be in the various formats. And we'll try and make sure that we've got a couple of formats there to do that. And then of course, in, in the interim, until we get there, um, 
there are lots of freely available bits of software on, on the internet that you can find that will convert a file into something. So when you find out what your student specifically happens to use and what they need, maybe you could do the conversions at present until we can get all of ours done. Um, but we're moving as fast as we can to do that. So that's two of the big questions that came up before. Um, and then a third one, and this was really a beautiful question, I thought. I have a pupil that suffers with panic attacks and that causes issues with how they're going to cope with speaking in the exam etc cetera, etc cetera. um is there some way that maybe somebody else could make the announcements now mark has already said that during the time of the pandemic because of the fact that you can't be in the room we've opened up the possibility of leading by webcam which won't go away that is now something that's going to stay with us um you have to have at the student side a device on an individual user account doing the recording so there's going to have to be some form of reasonable, I said reasonable, that's what I meant actually, reasonable adult, maybe not responsible, but reasonable adult at that side, if they're not an adult themselves. And that person, of course, could make the announcement, or the teacher across the webcam could make the announcements of the pieces. So we are, we, I mean, one of the things that Mark slid through a little bit, but is, is what made me very keen to work with MTV is they had, we have a real passion for accessibility and a real passion to open up music education to everybody. So if there is a way that we can find that would support you getting a student to the table, we'll find it. Um, and in this instance, that's a pretty easy one. We can just allow the teacher to announce what the student will play. Um, so those are the three big questions that came to us before. And then we've had some questions from the session just now. Um, are there plans to expand the listening side of the oral tests, Mark? Um, before I, I'm going to answer that in a second, but I'm just going to move back very slightly to what you just said now. Um, this is a very important point. Um, if you are going to do something like not the candidate to announce their pieces, but um, it, there would need to be a, a genuine reason for that, and that's fine. If there is a good reason, that's fine. Um, please write in to us beforehand to explain that and just to mention that, and the, uh, we will actually... Uh, give you the dispensation to do that um, and please make a note of it when you submit the exam that you've done so because uh, we don't want everyone doing that it is just really very very special occasions when it's uh, absolutely necessary and we're very happy to accommodate any situation but only as long as people are uh, explained to us what the reasoning behind that is and we we are aware of it um, so the listening skills or the the oral tests Expanding the oral tests, um, well, the, idea, the answer to that is actually yes, there are plans to expand the oral tests and they are technological ways in which we're going to do that. But they are a way off yet because as you can see, MTB Exams is a very forward thinking um, organisation and always looking for solutions to help teachers. And there are technologies now that will enable us actually to expand our oral test offering and we are in the process of looking at that at the moment but we are not there yet so currently in the, this current syllabus you have uh, on the syllabus what is required but I suppose the short answer is yes there are plans. Great um, and then only because I, I realise what the time is that one question just popped up I'm afraid we haven't answered quite all of the questions that I said I'd feed to Mark but um, the question that just popped up in the chat is actually a good one to just really focus on. Um, is there a specific broadband requirement needed? Thank you, Julie, for this. When recording on the app. So the app, first of all, asks for you to log into it, but then it asks for you to do a sound test to make sure that it's, you know, everything is working, the background noise isn't awful, etc. And then it asks you to put the phone or tablet, whatever the device is the app is on, into the flight mode. So the recording device will not go on the internet and will not do the recording over the internet. It's a very secure way for us to ensure that the recording is taken in one shot, is securely stored within the app and allows uh, there to be no need for us to be concerned. You across the webcam, of course, there's going to be all kinds of fun internet issues, um, which was one of the reasons that we've produced the recordings to support the listening and reading skills happening. So the student freely gets the website, pulls down the files, they can prepare with them with you in good time, and then during the day you will just direct them through 
Okay, now let's do the recording tests. Um, and then, uh, sorry, reading skills tests. Um, and then the app will walk, the recording will walk them through. The recording will say, let's start exercise one, clap them in, and off they go against the pulse. So the student themselves should not be affected by any form of internet issue during the exam. Once the exam is done, if everybody is a little bit concerned about their, their Wi-Fi at home or their dodgy broadband connection, then of course they could take themselves to, and I won't advocate any specific cafe, but they could just go to some large chain that happens to have free internet and make sure that they've got a really strong connection when they hit submit and then off it goes to us. Um, which they will only do once you've all listened and you're very happy that that is the recording you're going to submit. I say that because as Mark said, every exam is recorded in one complete take. You can't do it in bits. And if you listen back and we know that there was a complete train crash in the middle and we all know that could have gone better and the student is happy to do it, you must remember to set a limit on this. Otherwise they will keep recording it till they're 65 and get it perfect. Then you can at least rerun that exam, but the app will not store any previous recordings. Once you start again, you've gambled the loss of the old recording. You will now do the whole exam in one take. And then when you are ready, you'll hit submit in a decent internet connection to make sure you feel safe with that. Um, that partially goes back to the question about scales that somebody else asked. What happens you know, if a student stumbles in the scales and what happens uh, if they play the wrong ones? There is no specific order that they have to play the scales in. You and them will just walk through the scales in, in the recording as you need. Um, but I feel like that question deserves a bit more of an answer and more of a follow-up. So I put my email address in the chat. Um, and at the very beginning, I stuck our Twitter account and our general inquiries at mtbexams.com. So please feel free to follow up on any of the questions that, as I said, will pop into your head in about three minutes' time. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Nav. And thank you, Mark, for all your, all your thoughts. Um, I, I was just going to comment on going back to the GCSE recordings. You know, you would inevitably find that the first recording is always the best recorder. So like any preparation, you know, an exam is, is an exam is an exam, whether it's face to face or whether it's done online. And it's up to us, the teachers, I think you'd all agree to, to make the exam part of the learning process, but not the reason for learning. And the performances have to happen before the exam so that the exam is just part of the learning process, yeah? So don't leave it to the recording itself to perform the pieces because that's when it will go wrong, folks. You've got to get them ready in advance by doing lots of other performances in mini concerts, in piano parties, which is what I have online. Sharon, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, completely agree. And I, I mean, one of the things that I know I've been finding and a lot of our teachers at the Curious Piano Teachers have been reporting on is where you know, our students have always had their phones and, you know, devices in the past, but it has been at this time, um, you know, possibly because we've been struggling to hear them on, on Zoom and where they have actually been using their phones, their iPads, tablets to record themselves. And that in itself is just such a wonderful thing to do because mm. as Ali has just been alluding to there, it is the difference, you know, there is the, the practicing stage, there is the playing stage, and then there is the performance, which Sally and I have noticed that so often that's the bit that's kind of left out actually practicing yes. performing, which Perform. is so important, you know, so it's different from just playing through their pieces. They need to have the opportunities, you know, whether it's actually going at this in this, you know, current climate where they're actually going and for their grandparents or their friends hosting a little recital on Zoom. So it is so important that they have done all of that and then they will be ready to go and, and to submit this. So I know we are just about out of time here, but it has been wonderful to have everyone on this call today. I just wanna to say thank you for being here um for being here live and if you're watching the replay uh, i'm sure that it's been equally beneficial just also, also want to say to to mark and to nav a big thank you for coming on and um and presenting on this webinar for us today um i want to just reiterate to that all of our members do be looking out for hannah's uh e-newsletter this evening 
because in there will be your, um, you'll be able to get that grade three. The actual, I know that it's been really great, Mark, that you've walked us through the grade three today, but of course, everyone is going to be this evening receiving the actual grade three digital handbook for piano. Um, if you're not a member, again, I'm just going to pop there the link that you can, um, you can join us um, free for a month. Just remember to use the coupon code um, free support um, and that's at thecuriouspianoteachers.org forward slash join and even if you're watching the replay and haven't joined us until a little bit later and missed the email that Hannah sends out later uh, feel free just to drop us an email and uh, we will put you in the direction of that free MTB handbook. So I think that is us for today. I just want to wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, I know in, I'm in Northern Ireland and the sun is shining. It's beautiful. Obviously, not so much for you guys over in England. I'm sure we'll get it. Trust me, it's Ireland. It rains. <laughs> so have a wonderful weekend. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on another webinar soon. Take care and bye for now.